Hey, and we're back to Math 154, Lesson 6, Part A. I've split Lesson 6 into two parts. You're probably going to want to listen to both parts before heading off into uh, doing the online homework for this section. Uh, this is still Section 6.3, Trigonometric Functions of Real Numbers. Well, here's the unit circle, and you can see up here I've got a link to our course web page. You really want to go out there and um, and click on click on the course web page, go to unit circle, click on the unit circle, and print that out. Your life will be a little better uh, if you have that unit circle in your notes, something you can look at. And again, just click on the link and print that out, and then come on back here. Well, here's basically the unit circle. Notice I have the x-axis and cosine. Always link those together. Y-axis and sine. A unit circle is nothing more than a circle that has a radius of one unit. So we draw uh, a coordinate plane. We don't mark any units on it. You draw a circle that's centered at the origin and one and mark the, each intersection with the x and y axis as one unit. And again, we write cosine next to the x and sine next to the y. So we draw an angle in standard position with a, a theta equal 60 degrees. So we randomly pick a 60 degree angle. We're really interested in this intersection point between the terminal side of the 60 degree angle and the unit circle. So we mark that point P and that intersection point again. It's always going to be a big deal to us. All right. Mark the, and we're going to mark the coordinate at P. And that coordinate is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So now I know the cosine and the sine of a 60 degree angle because the x value is the cosine and the y value is the sine. And again, x cosine, y sine. If you have the intersection point between the terminal side of the angle and the unit circle, that coordinate is cosine, comma, sine. The x value is equal to the cosine of the angle. The y value is equal to the sine of the angle. This is true whenever the terminal side of an angle in standard position intersects the unit circle. And I keep saying this, all of our angles are in standard position. This is how we're going to memorize the cosine, sine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Nah, I don't know if we're going to memorize it that way. It's going to help us keep the numbers straight. Now, all angles between 0 and 45 degrees have a larger value for cosine than sine. Because every one of those intersection points, you are farther out on the x than you're up on the y. Now, the reverse happens for angles between 45 degrees and 90. They all have a larger y value than x. Therefore, they have a larger sine than cosine because you're farther up on the y than you're out on the x. And then what happens at 45? Well, they have the same x and y value because you're the exact same distance uh, out to the right on the x as you are up on the y. You're, you're bisecting the, the, uh, the quadrant at that point. Now, tangent, sine over cosine, that's not news. Uh, so what can we say about the value of tangent in these given ranges? So for angles that are between 0 and 45 degrees, tangent's less than 1. Because look at the fraction. Your cosine's bigger than your sine. Therefore, all the angles between 0 and 45 degrees have a tangent less than 1. Now at 45 degrees, tangent's equal to 1 because sine and cosine equal each other. Y and X equal each other when theta is 45 degrees. Angles between 45 degrees and 90 have a tangent larger than 1 because the sine is bigger than the cosine. The Y is bigger than the X. And all this helps us try to keep all these numbers straight. So we look here at 30 degrees. Notice the sine is a half. The cosine is square root of 3 over 2. Yeah, a half is less than square root of 3 over 2. Jump down to 60 degrees, pi over 3 radians. Now the sine is square root of 3 over 2, and the cosine is a half. And again, the sine is bigger than the cosine. Well, yeah, because we're farther up on the y than we're out to the, on, the, on the x. At 45 degrees, there's no coincidence here. Sine and cosine are equivalent to each other because x and y are equal to each other. Now tangent is sine divided by cosine. Notice for the 30 degree angle, the tangent is less than 1. For the 45 degree angle, the tangent is equal to 1. And for the 60 degree angle, tangent is bigger than 1. All right, find the exact value of x and y. Oh, we love exact value problems. I've got a 30 degree angle down here. I've got a 5, I've got an x, and we've got the y here for the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say the sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, 5 over y. I go to my chart, I see that the sine of 30 is a half, 
I set that equal to 5 over y, and then I cross multiply. That's the exact answer. Exact answer, I mean, it's 10, so I mean, it would have been the exact answer anyway, but exact means exact. Now, if I want to go ahead and find x, what I could have done is Pythagorean theorem, but I want to play the tangent game one more time. So I set tangent 30, which is opposite over adjacent, 5 over x, and the tangent of 30 is 1 over square root of 3. I set that equal to 5 over x. I cross multiply. I get x is 5 squared root of 3. Now that's the exact answer. If we want an approximated answer, you know, 1 or 2 or 3 decimal places, you would use your calculator to take 5 times square root of 3. And you, you could approximate that answer. When we want the exact answer, we want it in this form right here. All right. Let's do another one. Find the exact values of x and y again. And again, y, x are the legs. We have a 60 degree angle down here. So I say the sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse, y over 8. The sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. So I took out sine of 60, replace it with square root of 3 over 2. I cross multiply, 2y equals 8 square root of 3, and y is 4 square root of 3. That's the exact answer. Now to find x, we could do Pythagorean theorem, but I want to play the trick game one more time. So I did cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 8. Cosine of 60 is a half. Cross multiply, 2x equals 8, x equals 4. Now there's a 30 degree angle up here because this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And there are some 30, 60, 90 relationships you might remember from high school, but you don't have to know them. As long as you know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60 degrees, your life will be pretty sweet in this class. That was ridiculous. Of course, this life won't be sweet in this class, but you'll get it, it'll be bearable. How about how about why don't we say that? Now, 45, 45 right triangles are kind of unique. You had a theorem back in in geometry days that says that sides across from congruent angles are congruent. Well, this is 45 degrees. That means this has to be 45 degrees, which means x and six have to be equal to each other. And here we go. The tangent of 45 is x over 6, opposite over adjacent. Tangent of 45 is 1, so x is 6. Now, to find y, we do cosine 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. Set that equal to 6 over y. My cosine of 45 is 1 over square root of 2. I cross multiply, I get y equals 6 square root of 2. There you go. Now, remember, uh, 1 over square root of 2 is equivalent to square root of 2 over 2. Uh, I like writing it 1 over square root of 2 because I like dealing with it that way. I, I seem to have less steps with I do that. But you're more than welcome to write square root of 2 over 2 for the equivalency if you want to. All right. Now, we can pick points in the inner circle that are on the x and y axis, not in a quadrant. In other words, they're quadrantal angles and find the sine and cosine of those angles. For instance, 90 degrees. Well, where's 90 degrees at? It's right here. And that coordinate is 0, 1. So if I want the sine of 90 degrees, it's 1. If I want the cosine of 90 degrees, it's 0. Because the intersection point between the terminal side of the angle and the unit circle was 0, comma 1. Now, tangent's undefined because tangent's sine over cosine, which is 1 divided by 0. And you can do this on your calculator. It'll say error, but you can't divide by 0. And then you have your three reciprocals. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of 0 is 1 over 0, which is undefined. Now the tangent is 1 over 0, so therefore cotangent would be 0 over 1, the reciprocal of tangent. And that's equal to 0. Now we'll give you a little heads up here. Whenever you're dealing with the quadrantals, we're looking at 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. It goes around and around. When you look at the six trigonometric functions, 2 will always be undefined, 2 will always be equal to 0, and the other 2 will be equal to 1 or negative 1, depending if you're here or over here. Well, how about theta equals pi? Well, pi is right over here at negative 1, 0, and their cosine is negative 1, your sine is 0. Now the tangent is 0, it's, negative, it's 0 divided by negative 1. And then you have your three reciprocals. Again, the reciprocal of Un, of, of 0 is 1 over 0, which is undefined. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. And the tangent here is undefined because, again, the reciprocal of our tangent is going to be negative 1 over 0.
Again, two are undefined, two are zero, and these two are negative one. Let's look at three pi over two, which is 270 degrees. Our coordinate is zero, negative one. Therefore, the cosine is zero, and the sine is negative one. And we have another undefined term here, a tangent, because we have negative one divided by zero. And here are your three reciprocals. And remember, the reciprocal of zero is undefined, because again, you're going one over that. Now we're back here at zero. Probably should have started with that one. I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I, must have, I must not have been thinking. So here we go. We're going to finish this up with zero. And that's the point one comma zero. We're out one on the x. We're up zero on the y. Your cosine is one, and your sine is zero. And your tangent is zero. And then the reciprocal of zero is undefined. The reciprocal of one is one. And the reciprocal of zero is undefined. Now find the exact value of the six trigonometric functions. Cosine's a half, and the tangent's less than zero. Our first step is to figure out which quadrant are we in. So our cosine's positive, that's in quadrants one and four, and our tangent's negative, that's in quadrants two and four. And so what they seem to agree at is quadrant four. Cosine's greater than zero in quadrants one and four. Tangent's less than zero in quadrants two and four, and therefore theta's in quadrant four. Once you've identified which quadrants they're in, you can draw the triangle in that correct quadrant. Now the cosine was one half, that's x over hypotenuse, one half, so get that in. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the missing side was square root of three. Since it was heading down, I made it negative square root of three. If I have the three sides of the triangle in the correct quadrant, then I can do all six trigonometric functions. Well, because the sine is y over hypotenuse, the cosine is x over hypotenuse, and the tangent is y over x. And then you have your reciprocals. Notice your sine and cosecant are both negative, tangent and cotangent are both negative, and your cosine and secant is positive. Let's do another one. Uh, here I'm saying the cosecant is positive. Well, that means sine is positive. That's quadrants one and two. The secant is negative, that means cosine is negative, that's quadrants two and three, and so I think they seem to agree in quadrant two. Let's check it out. All right, so cosecant is greater than zero in quadrants one and two. Secant is less than zero in quadrants two and quadrants three, and so they agree on quadrant two. So I'm gonna draw this in quadrant two. There we are. Now cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so if the cosecant is five halves, then the sine is two fifths. We do Pythagorean theorem, and our missing side is the square root of 21, which I make negative because it's going left. I have now labeled the three sides of the triangle in the correct quadrant. And I'll remind you, we always draw back to the x-axis. We never draw back to the y-axis. And there you go. Your sine is y over hypotenuse. Your cosine is x over hypotenuse, and your tangent is y over x. Notice that we write this as negative 2 over square root of 21. It was really 2 over negative square root of 21, but we always put the negative up top. And then you have your three reciprocals. And we started with cosecant was 5 halves, and look, we still have cosecant's 5 halves. So we probably got a pretty good shot this is right. Hey, that's it for Lesson 6, Part A. Take a break and then complete Part B. You can probably get started on the homework, but uh, why, don't you, why don't you complete Part B first?